Hello, this is Caleb Barney with Russell Real Estate, and today I wanted to go over the three major outlets uh, in regards to housing predictions, and I'm going to talk about Zillow, Realtor.com, and Redfin's predictions for 2024. What they're seeing, I'll break it down a little bit uh, for what I would predict as well, or I'm going to predict as well, and basically... When I go over things, I mostly look at it from a lens of Northeast Ohio. I'm about a half hour outside of Cleveland, so uh, I'm a, a suburb of Cleveland on the west side in Strongsville, Ohio. But basically what we're looking at here to start off is it's from CoreLogic, and it's actually on uh, the Bigger Pockets website right now. But they're just going over a year-to-date, uh, year-over-year percentage change in home price. And you can see that Ohio is actually in the 5 to 7% range as far as how much their homes have appreciated year-over-year. Year. You do, do see some uh, very strong areas, so primarily the Northeast, um, where they were you know, over 7%. Uh, a lot of the Midwest in general and also the East Coast. Uh, was between five and seven, and then um, and then you're starting to see everything fill in in between, with uh, primarily the lowest growth and sometimes negative, uh, you know, or basically depreciation in house prices, for parts of New York, Texas, and a lot of the uh, kind of western and mountainous states here. So that is uh, that's just the map, but. Let's start with Zillow. Zillow is the most optimistic of the three giants, I would say, in the industry. Uh, so Zillow's latest forecast, by the way, this article, I did do a breakdown of all of their, uh, all of their predictions uh, probably about a, a, a few weeks ago when this uh, first came out. So this actually came out November 30th. Um, I am recording this on December 11th. But... In regards to the home prices, it says Zillow's latest forecast calls for home values to hold steady in 2024, falling 0.2%. So they're basically saying, hey, things are going to be flat. Um, so I overall, I would say for the U.S., I could see this being pretty close uh, to being accurate. I still do think that we're going to see a slight improvement in uh, in prices. Well, I guess it depends on what side, if you're a buyer or seller, if you view that as an improvement. But I would say a slight increase in home values for 2024 nationally uh, is my prediction there. For Realtor.com, I thought that theirs was kind of a little confusing, to be honest, because uh, here are the forecasts, uh, or you know, Realtor.com's forecasts for key housing indicators. Um, for mortgage rates, for example, they are predicting that the average uh, 30-year fixed rate mortgage is going to be 6.8% for 2024, and that uh, by the end of 2024, it'll be 6.5%. Uh, as of today, looking at Mortgage News Daily, we were just over 7%. I think it was like 7.05%. Um, and we actually peaked about five, six weeks ago, I want to say, when we were over 8% for the 30-year average, um, or 30-year fixed rate loan, and that was a national average. So, of course, uh, you know, interest rates depends on a lot of different things. Um, but I like looking at Mortgage News Daily just to at least see where we're, uh, you know, where the overall trends are going. But um, basically, here's here's where I disagree with Realtor.com. So they're saying mortgage rates are going to drop um, basically between a quarter to a half point, um, and basically they dropped from, you know, one point two five to one point five from the height of this year, uh, percentage points there. But they're saying that existing home sales is going to be the same. So we're not getting an influx of houses that are listed. They actually are saying the opposite, that existing home for sale inventory is going to decrease 14%, which I might be reading this data incorrectly, but... Basically, and they're saying year over year, that's what the Y slash Y means, but 
2023, we saw 4 million home sales, which is near historic lows, especially considering how many, uh, you know, what our population is. Um, in 2022, that was 5 million. In 2021, I believe that was over 6 million. And if you look at the historical average for uh, basically the past almost 10 years, uh, minus, you know, the pandemic there, we were averaging just over five and a quarter million. So if we're still having extremely low sales and inventory is also very, very low, I don't understand how they are predi predicting a median price decreasing almost 2%. Um, in my opinion, when mortgage rates fall, we are going to see an influx of buyers. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as nearly as crazy as what some people are saying and predicting. Some people are like, oh, once it gets down to, you know, six and a half percent or lower, uh, it's going to be like 2021 all over again. I, I really do disagree with that because again, the challenge is affordability. Um, people are making good wages. Um, you know, they're, they're seeing slight increases in their income. Um, but home prices have stayed pretty strong and interest rates went way up from 2021 um, where, you know, they more than doubled. They were at, you know, 3% or less. And now they're even predicting 6.5%, which I would be happy to see. So I don't predict, uh, you know, these 10, 12 offers on a house again because it's going to unlock some buyers being at 6.5%, but you're still going to be uh, still going to have a lot of fringe buyers uh, who are unable to qualify for a mortgage, uh, even at that rate, or they can qualify for it, but they're not going to go, you know, $30,000 over asking and offer an appraisal gap. That's where I think there is a difference. So basically, again, where I take issue here with realtor.com is everything is a supply and demand equation in my head. If supply is decreasing by 14% and demand is increasing because mortgage rates are getting lower, then I don't see how home prices are going to decrease 2%. Um, again, this is their national forecast, but still, uh, I just, I don't see it personally. And uh, Redfin, they came out with their prediction uh, about six days ago, and they're saying that home prices will fall 1%. Um, with this, prices will fall 1% year over year in the second and third quarters uh, when the home selling season is in full swing, and that will mark the first time prices have declined since 2012. So they're thinking that, uh, you know, they're saying overall, Prices should be up three point or three percent year over year uh, nationally, uh, based on the data that they're using. They're thinking that it's going to fall one percent nationally in twenty twenty four. Again, I don't necessarily agree with this, or I don't agree with this, I should say. But at least their predictions make sense because this falls in line. They say home prices are going to fall. Well, why will it fall? New listings are going to pick up, so more inventory is going to hit the market. Again, where Realtor.com really messes up, in my opinion, is they're saying less inventory by quite a bit off of our historic low um, is going to hit the market. So new listings are going to tick up is what they say. Um, I actually haven't read Red Redfin's entire article, so I'll look at this as we go through. They think that mortgage rates are going to steadily decline but remain above 6%. I agree with that. Um, they're predicting rates will fall to about 6.6%. So not too far off. And they're saying by the end of 2024, Realtor.com was saying 6.5% by year end. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that sooner than year end. Um, again, the national average is just over 7% right now. But I was talking with a lender earlier today, and he was able to get an FHA buyer uh, a 6.5% interest rate uh, 
just the other day, and that's without buying any points either. Uh, so that's without buying the rate down. So um, I can definitely see mortgage rates, uh, you know, honestly, even hitting below that 6.6, 6.5% by end of 2024. Um, again, I'm actually of the camp where I'd like to see mortgage rates be a little more predictable. Um, right now, with the rates basically being a roller coaster ride, it's not giving buyers or sellers a lot of confidence. Um, and so for the buyer, okay, if the interest rate uh, increases a quarter of a point, what does that do to my monthly payment? Um, and then to sellers, if it increases a quarter of a point, or sometimes even like we've seen half point swings in very short periods of time, then fewer buyers are going to qualify. Or, um, you know, by the time they list their house and get it under contract, is that buyer, you know, it, how strong of a buyer are they? Or are we going to have to go back on market? Um, so, yeah, and then they're just saying change will come to the real estate industry, which, again, that makes sense just with all the commission lawsuits and everything going on. Um, renting will lose its stigma. And Biden has a housing problem, which could hurt his re-election bid. Uh, as far as what they're saying for prices, it says prices will fall a lot in some metros and rise in others. So they're expecting them to fall in certain parts of Florida. Uh, and partly, I agree with that too. Partly that's because they had such a crazy run-up. Um, during the pandemic, a ton of people... Uh, and this is what they're saying. Huh, that's funny. I didn't even read that. During the pandemic, a ton of people were moving to, you know, very nice areas. Um, they were going to Florida. It was very desirable. And as a result, the home prices increased dramatically. So, of course, it's just it's easier for those prices to fall because they went up so quickly. Um, but also... They're leaving because of increasing risk of climate disasters. And I'm not saying uh, that the people are necessarily, the buyers are necessarily thinking that, but the homeowner's insurance cost is rising quite considerably, and that, I think, will be a deterrent. Uh, they do say that prices are likely to rise in affordable metros, uh, such as mine, even though they don't mention Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I think that that is actually going to be one of the areas that will rise. Um, and my prediction about a month ago when I was feeling less optimistic due to interest rates was that we would probably see, you know, between a two to four or three to five percent increase year over year by the, the end of the year uh, statistics, but um, and full year statistics, I should say. But um, as I'm becoming a little more optimistic, I could see, I, I actually think that, um, you know, that we're going to start seeing an uptick in listings uh, sooner rather than later. I was thinking the spring is going to take off like crazy. And that's why in one of my other prediction videos, I said, if you can find a distressed property right now that maybe is going to take a, you know, a three month rehab uh, to flip it, I think that that would be perfect because there are fewer home buyers uh, looking right now. Uh, typically, between you know Thanksgiving and New Year's, it's pretty slow. Uh, you know, as far as seasonality is concerned, in these cold weather markets. And if you have less competition right now to buy, and you could buy a deal because it's a distressed asset, and then you can basically flip the property, or if you're uh, interested in investing and keeping a, a long-term rental, you could burr the property, buy rehab, uh, rent, refinance, and then repeat it. I think that those would all be very good options come spring and summer of 2024. Uh, that is going to, uh, I will put one caveat in there. Since they talked politics here, I'm not actually going to talk politics, but uh, the geopolitical picture overall um, you know, there's a lot going on, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, whether it's um, Israel and Hamas, whether it's uh, tensions with China, the BRICS nations, 
um, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Obviously, there is the uh, presidential election coming up as well. People have been talking about recessions for about uh, two years now. So, like, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But assuming that we don't have any major wars or any major recessions or anything like that, um, I do think that overall the home prices are going to go up in 2024. And uh, in the Cleveland area in general, I actually am leaning more towards that, you know, four to five percent now as opposed to that two to four or even three to five. So um, I, I'm starting to shift my opinion a little bit. I will have uh, a formal opinion written up probably by the end of the year here. But uh, I always like to see what the what the big guys are doing, Redfin, Realtor.com and Zillow and compare what they're saying to what I'm thinking and feeling. Uh, and what I'm seeing in the market as well. And then I do like to call them out as well. I've been uh, pretty harsh on Zillow uh, in years past, but I actually am on board with uh, with them here. And it's actually Realtor.com that's kind of, uh, you know, getting my confusion and, uh, you know, uh, disdain here, I guess. But um, that's, that's it for today. If you have any questions in regards to uh, buying, selling, or investing in the Northeast Ohio market, um, particularly within you know, 45 minutes to an hour of Strongsville, I would be happy to help you out. I'd be happy to have a conversation. And if you have any predictions of your own, um, I'd love to see them. Put it in the comments below and, uh, and have a great day.